Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Renew. I'm Rohani, and to answer your question, yes, self love is absolutely fucking real. That's it. Podcast over. It's a mindset, energy, and a skill set that you carry with yourself. But is there a need to love yourself? I think that it's great for survival. I get the whole spiritual take of how can you love yourself because that would mean there's two of you when technically you're one person. so you and yourself it's not a separate thing right i get it but i also feel like that's just a technical breakdown of the word and sort of like ignores the deeper meaning behind self love what self love means to me is that it is self perception self belief self care and self acceptance in that order and all of these categories are different and there are different steps to sort of achieve it your self perception is essentially what you think of yourself belief is what you think you're worth or what you believe you're capable of achieving and doing because of how deserving you think you are of things and your desires self care includes the practices that you incorporate to get to self acceptance and acceptance is when you really accept your flaws but i feel like i don't think there is anything like fucking flaws okay because the fact that you think something about you is a flaw is the flaw. you cannot possibly look at physical traits and think that it's a flaw just because it does not match some external opinion and beauty standards that the world has provided all that is just like marketing and capitalism and conditioning it's external and in terms of character flaw i feel like sometimes that's needed for character development it's there to teach you something or just something that you can work through the deeds and the things that you do in the past they don't necessarily define you like it's not something that you would attach your identity with so they can't be considered a flaw either but that's just me okay story time so i've struggled with self esteem issues for as long as i can remember ever since i was a little girl i have always had one mission which is how to get more confident and just like how to be completely content with myself and i'll tell you why that is having no understanding of what esteem is and you know being brought up and raised in a joint family comparisons can be really casual and it was extremely normal just to compare me to like my cousins whether it was based on my appearance or my intellect or my communication skills or even like my skill sets my hobbies but i was always compared i mean we were always compared this was always a topic of discussion whether it was criticism or appreciation uh, i got a lot of attention in school good and bad and i got used to it so i formed an image of myself and started viewing myself through the lens of others this image shattered in like high school i i faced a lot of rejection i felt inadequate i was also borderline depressed i f- did not feel like i belonged and then i joined fashion school almost as escapism with 2% hope that this could be a place where you know like i could shine a little bit and i did so when i joined fashion college this is where i learned how much control i had on my own life and i had a friend in college who really inspired me because she had so much control over her own life and she was so happy and i just realized that i was bickering so much i was complaining so much and i was always irritated never fully understanding that this was a choice that i could exercise and i could choose to do things that would make me happier and take decisions that would lead to joy another thing that i remember is that i think This was back in probably 2019. I was going on a trip with my family to Europe and I had gone shopping with my family and with my sister and we were trying on clothes and I just I was not happy with the way I looked like in my body and I could not help but compare myself to her because she had the body type that I really admired and wanted. It was the model body type like you know skinny tall athletic that energy. and uh, whereas i was a little more like curvy and, and i remember i think even in adidas and no matter what i tried i just hated i hate looking in the mirror and how i was looking and i was just so unhappy with it and then i would see clothes on her and they would look so good and then i didn't even feel like buying anything for myself because i felt like even my parents thought the same they did not imply it at all i was assuming that others were looking at me the way i was looking at myself and feeling internally and i just did not feel confident and i think this was probably the first time i journaled and i started writing about why that bothered me because i started crying and i was just like why did i care so much why was i comparing myself to my sister and her body and how she looked and that's when i realized that i did not love myself and that was such a weird realization because i have received a fair share of attention and love before that and from others but it did not matter if i could not give it to myself i would look 
to others to make me feel happy or satisfied or compliment me or make me feel validated about myself whether it was boys whether it was my friends whether it was work if my friends spoke about other girls who were pretty that would start triggering me and i think because my whole identity was sort of based on my appearance because of the appreciation and validation i got for it while growing up and when i could not see that for myself in the mirror that broke my sense of self and i realized that i have no internal locus of control or awareness about my patterns i also remember this one time where basically i was seeing this guy and we were talking achievements and stuff like that and he told me that yeah like don't you believe in yourself and i very like foolishly just said yeah no like i don't and he asked me like how can you not believe in yourself because i would always sort of like depend on him to validate my work and make me feel like i was on the right path i constantly needed that reassurance from him and he was just like how can you not believe in yourself and i didn't realize this at the time but i did not trust myself enough to think that my opinion of myself or my work or anything mattered and it is so silly like how can you not believe in yourself like now that i think about it in therapy i had the realization that i was not looking in myself from my own eyes and i'm not good only when somebody else thinks i'm good and that was game changing i have always thought about how i can you know build unshakable confidence the answer to this is that in all honesty you're a nobody i am a nobody and we don't matter because we take birth we live our lives we die and we're forgotten no matter how famous you are nobody's going to remember you 24/7 like how you live your life in your body thinking about yourself 24/7 nobody's going to do that and that's just how life is but this life that we have is a gift and if you're still here your purpose is not over god has a plan for you it's realizing that you're just the soul you're not the body not the mind not the personality not the looks not your hobbies not your habits nothing we're all just going to go back to the environment to the energy that created us but having a positive self image and positive thoughts can be transformational in your life experience so what this is is essentially just a part of the ego right and yet having a positive self image and self love is really important is paradoxical because you can give a lot of acceptance to yourself when you understand and look at yourself from a bigger lens you know like that reel where you're just like on the bed and like zoom out zoom out country zoom out earth zoom out galaxy like you're just a minuscule part of the universe so you don't matter what you do in this materialistic world that we're living for survival confidence is key and we must cultivate it while knowing not to take ourselves so seriously and i'm still figuring it out i feel like my journey of self love is still going and it's realizing that there is no need to like or dislike yourself that is just an ego's voice last step self acceptance is when you realize that there is no need to have an opinion about yourself whether it's positive or negative it just you just are without labels and that is complete self acceptance but first step in this process is shifting your mindset to cultivate a positive self image how to develop a killer self perception and killer self belief it is atlas ascent let's start with atlas a is for awareness it's for being present about your thoughts about realizing what is your self perception what are the thoughts that you keep telling yourself what is the voice in your head that's constantly bickering or complimenting whatever it is maybe it's in, it's like a middle ground the areas where you judge yourself where you criticize yourself and the areas where you feel more confident to be aware of that noise is the first step how you speak to and about yourself and cultivating that awareness is essential every time i'm out when i speak poorly about myself i can feel it hitting my gut because i did not respect myself completely and i am aware of that and that is amazing actually because uh, this gets me to my next point t is for triggers identifying your triggers i think every time something that triggers you which is caused externally right or even if it's internal for example if i'm outside i'm chilling with my friends and i say something shitty about myself and i'm just like wait why did i say that or if somebody says something to me and i get like immediately offended by it immediately make a note of that and then you come back you analyze what it was and you journal on it you ask yourself why the fuck did this offend me why was i triggered with this what did i feel where was i feeling it what caused it why do i believe in this perception where is this stemming from all these questions right these are your limiting beliefs another great way of identifying when you're thinking about your higher self your visions your goals the doubts that appear in your head like the voices that uh, speak up 
are your limiting beliefs and you have to be true to yourself any doubts that you have regarding fulfilling your desire or your capacity to actually execute it is a limiting belief that has been a uh, pattern into your head and now you're conditioned into thinking in that particular way but it's so easy to undo if you ever get jealous because of something that somebody else has the fact that you felt envy is a sign that it is meant for you and that you want it and so instead of looking at it from a point of view of why don't i have this you replace that with how can i have this or use it as sort of like oh shit the only reason why i felt envy is because i want it and i think if i want it it is meant for me in another reality it already exists with you which is why you're drawing that energy to you and that desire is born so now that you know you're aware okay you know your triggers and you're undoing your limiting beliefs how do you do it you start writing i'll give you an example for me recently i was unraveling some limiting beliefs around my career and also around my height for that matter so i'm a shorty okay and i have never felt short to myself but I, like i've been made aware of my height a lot by my external environment especially from my family i think there's always been that thing that oh like if you were a little bit taller like you'd be it you'd you know you'd like you'd be in movies you'd be there just i think that fact that i'd be more successful and my life would be 10 times better if i was a little bit taller which is something that i have no control of first of all and i realized that somewhere i had started believing this belief about my height and thinking that certain opportunities in my workspace could not come to me because i was not as tall as say a model and that's when i realized that no fucking way i am not going to allow an external opinion which is triggering from their insecurity and their limiting beliefs in their life dictate how i perceive myself so what questions do you ask yourself to find out what your limiting beliefs are what am i feeling right now what is bothering me and then dig deeper on it keep asking yourself why 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 till you get a solid answer till you find that trigger if failure was not an option what would my life look like what would i be doing how i do this is i either journal it out or if something's really bothering me it's making me anxious i just pull out my phone and i'm talking to myself on like a selfie camera just asking what is bothering me blah 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 why is it bothering me this happens so i'm feeling like this i eventually end up finding the limiting belief that is being a hindrance in my self love self perception and manifesting journey the next step is to combat and replace these limiting beliefs with positive affirmations i understand a lot of people think that affirmations is bullshit but i think as someone who's tried and tested this i can tell you that i have seen such an enormous change in myself and my personality because of practicing affirmations this is no joke affirmations are the easiest way to lift your mood to change your day from having like a shitty day where you're feeling low to completely feeling like that girl and in the start you might feel like okay like i'm saying that oh i am this i'm that i'm confident i'm pretty i'm successful i'm rich and maybe you're not rich and you don't feel like it doesn't matter it is for your subconscious mind to start believing in it like it is real that petition will become reality so you replace all your limiting beliefs with affirmations and counter it with positive beliefs instead and then you read and you replay them in your head again and again every fucking day if you're sleeping listen to an affirmation playlist which i'm going to be dropping soon you should always know that nobody has the right to judge or compare you if you feel like somebody out there has something better than you and if you had the opportunity to trade your life with them would you do it i personally wouldn't they might have something that i want but that just means that it's possible for me to if they can have it so can i and so can you so s in atlas is for the source of your confidence and how you view and perceive yourself and how it should always be internal you need to create an internal locus of control you cannot look at yourself from the eyes of others because they don't know you their judgment is not valid or accurate because they are not spending time with you they don't know your deepest desires they don't know how you are who you are when you're alone only you know that so only you're a correct judge of yourself they are looking at you from a lens of their reality from their experiences their limiting beliefs their insecurities all of that so their perception is flawed at best for example i'm sure you've experienced that with different groups of people your equation and you are a different member in the group like with me 
with my family i'm kind of introverted but with my friends i'm extroverted depending on who i'm out with you can be and do whatever the fuck you want to do okay so we have self-perception sorted now so how do we sort out self-belief i feel like the stage that i'm in right now i'm developing my self-belief about myself because now that i've realized you know my limiting beliefs and I've been working on them and I have a way more positive self-image than I ever did. I literally could not give two shits about somebody else anymore and their opinion of me. How do I sort of cultivate that self-belief from within? So the acronym for this is ASCENT. Weird coincidence because I started to do this last year and for some reason I did not keep up. I would list down every small milestone or career on my WhatsApp chat uh, that I have pinned, whether it's somebody famous following me, working with one of my dream brands, any small or big, you know, hitting a follower milestone, whether it's buying something for myself, buying something for my family. When something goes wrong, we're so quick to judge ourselves and talk shit about ourselves, but we tend to forget and not exaggerate the highs enough, you know, and that is so important for you to always have a positive self-image and to keep that flow and momentum going. So list down all your strengths and your achievements, okay? And this will establish a sense of gratitude in you for whatever is happening. Every time you're in a space where you're doubting yourself and you feel like you can't do something, you go back and you read that list. This is like your portfolio of proof of things you've achieved. So this list, what it does is that it shows me everything that I'm capable of and all the good that is happening in my life. And I made it happen. If I can do it in the past, I can do it in the present and I will do it in the future. It's for survival. I hate to be that person, but think of all the trauma that you have experienced in your life in the past. All the shit that's gone, okay? All the hardships, every time you got rejected, whenever you failed, all that. You survived all of it and you're still here. If you can go through that, you can go through whatever small limiting belief is bothering you in your head. You're fine. Cease for compassion. You need to really stop judging yourself. You're not perfect fact okay you're human if you ever end up doing things that you regret it's completely okay you're learning you will get better as long as you keep taking steps and actions towards healing and getting better don't be too quick to judge yourself be kind to yourself it's really not that deep put effort into your appearance and your personality how you see and perceive yourself externally will directly translate into how you feel internally and by that, I don't mean like falling prey to beauty standards, but to take care of yourself, of your body, to be hygienic, work out. Effort is about self-care. It's the methods that you can incorporate, whether it's journaling, meditation, working out, having an elaborate skincare routine, doing affirmations, all those practices that make you feel good from the inside and spend time with yourself, put efforts into you, compliment yourself, take yourself out. And my favorite is you need to change the narrative of how you look at failure. Make failure your bitch. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Stop taking rejection and failure personally. A guy ghosted you, fuck that. You did not get that job, fuck that. Boaz does not want you to settle for mediocre things and people because he knows you deserve better. If your purpose was over, you would not still be here. You're still fucking alive. It's for training yourself to be prepared before you do things. Sometimes, being prepared for a situation it all it takes to develop a little more self-belief in yourself. You just go there straight like head on and you know what you have to do, whether it's a job interview. For example, if I'm trying to hire and if I sound like if I'm stuttering or if I'm just like in my head thinking, okay, so uh, how much will you take? Uh, like what salary are you expecting? Should like, no, like I need to know beforehand. I'm prepared with my questions. I'm prepared with what my expectations are and how much I'm willing to negotiate on the salary. I know everything in my head before I'm talking to somebody. And that makes me feel like, okay, I got my shit. And this is not something to stress about. But the last thing is self-acceptance. I think once you sort of like love this positive self-image and you've got that going, sooner or later you'll realize that from what I understand of spirituality is that there is no need to have a positive or negative self-image. Like how do you know that the thought that you have is negative or positive or if it's good or bad? Because you're just judging it. That is your judgment of it which is not accurate. It is affecting your experience, yes, but it is flawed. And eventually, I think the goal with self-acceptance to me is to reach a stage where you have accepted yourself to an extent where there is no need to judge yourself, to put labels or to have an opinion about yourself at all because you just are and that is enough for you to survive. Don't forget that everybody around you is going to perceive you the way you perceive yourself. And every time you settle for something, 
that you do not truly want. You're telling the universe you don't think you're worth receiving what you truly desire. Your time is expensive. Your energy is priceless. Not everybody is meant for you. And anybody who cannot respect or value that, out. Your opinion is the only one that's valid. Once you decide to something, stick with it. Do not question yourself. Okay, guys. I hope this video was fun for you to watch through the multiple camera movements and cuts the production value is giving. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and it brought you some value. I would love to know more about your self-love journey. So shoot me a DM on my Instagram or comment below if there's anything else that you're struggling with. I will see you in the next one. Bye.